Hi. This brief presentation reminds you of some key issues relating to population to help you prepare for the class sessions in week five of the semester. The class will be based on a series of questions starting with is population growth a real problem and why? In the lecture, Jackie has talked about the demographic transition, a process that the developed countries have passed through. During the transition, death rates are seen to fall with improved health care, nutrition, education, and then birth rates are then seen to fall also, albeit after a time lag. In that period, after death rates have fallen, but before birth rates fall, the natural rate of population increase accelerates. And this only stabilizes when the birth rate also adjusts. The focus of the class session will be on what happens if the birth rate fails to adjust and why that might be. Now, we can look at some examples of death and birth rates over time for a series of countries, uh, all on the same vertical scale. This shows the demographic transition in South Korea. Uh, the death rate already relatively low at the beginning and the birth rate adjusting downwards so that population growth uh, decelerates. If we look at Indonesia, again, there's some evidence that birth rates have been falling over this period uh, more rapidly than the death rate, so that the rate of population change also slows. However, if we look at a country like Ghana, we find that although the death rate falls to a similar sort of level as the other countries, uh, the birth rate has remained uh, higher, falling a bit, but still with a fairly rapid rate of increase of the population. And if we look at Uganda, we see that the birth rate has remained even more persistently high. So, the next step in the class will be to examine why birth rates may remain stubbornly high in a country like Uganda. One way of looking at this is by applying microeconomic analysis to the question. So, the next question we'll consider in the class is what factors at the microeconomic level might contribute to the high birth rate seen in many LDCs. Now, just to recap, perhaps in a slightly different way to the way that Jackie talked about it in the lecture, consider a household choosing a consumption bundle, being aware there's likely to be a trade-off between the number of children and the other goods that parents can consume. We can add an indifference curve onto the diagram to represent their preferences between the number of children and goods consumed. Given that there is a trade-off between children and other goods, we can also add a budget constraint. And therefore, the household chooses to be at the tangency point here, choosing to have C-star children. Notice that the slope of the budget constraint, which in part determines how many children the household chooses to, to have, is determined by... Uh, PC over PX. In other words, the price of children divided by the price of other goods. So the net price of children depends on a balancing of benefits and costs of having children. Notice we can characterize the demand for children as any other demand function. So the number of children demanded depends upon income Y, PC, the price of children, PX, the price of other goods, and upon tastes or preferences. And we can uh, put signs on these variables. Here I've assumed that the income response is positive. In other words, this is assuming that children are a normal good. Now, you may disagree with that and may think that children are an inferior good. But if children are a normal good, then Ceteris Paribus 
we would expect an increase in real incomes to lead to an increase in the demand for children, which of course seems to contradict the demographic transition argument. However, of course, that's not the case, and it's not the case because there's also a substitution effect at work, which uh, seems to be overbalancing, outweighing the income effect. The final part of the class draws these strands together. If we agree that there is a potential problem with population growth, and if our microeconomic analysis of the cause of this is correct, then our final question in the class is to discuss the feasibility and desirability of devising a population policy for LDCs. Now, before you come to the class, please think about these issues so you are ready to contribute. There is some reading to help you in your preparation. Uh, chapter 7 in the book by Perkins and Chapter 6 in Todaro and Smith. See you at the class.